House of Representative Committee on Governmental Affairs has promised to look into challenges faced by lottery operators in Nigeria and ensure that federal government derives financial benefit from lottery industry. This promise and expectations from lottery operators are some of the resolutions reached after the committee meeting with licensed lottery operators in Nigeria and the National Lottery Regulatory Commission at the National Assembly Complex. Chairman of the committee, Hussein Suleiman Zango Kangiwa, in his remark, said that lottery industry is expected to be the fourth major revenue earner for the federal government. Because definitely you cannot take the federal government's money and do what you want to do and refuse to pay. You go to the losses, that losses you are expected to be paid money to the government for the Nigerians, and you hide the money, you do your business with the money. Other members of the Committee on Governmental Affairs equally spoke on the committee readiness to work with all stakeholders to make the industry viable and generate revenue for the federal government. We The Director General of National Lottery Regulatory Commission, Lanley Bajabia Mila, who was accused by one of the federal lawmakers as the one that created some of the existing problems in the industry when he headed Lagos State Lottery Board, said that there is need to bridge communication gap existing in the sector. Addressing the committee members, the managing director of Give and Take Lottery, Jolly Enable Lele, spoke on the issue of non involvement of lottery agents in revenue sharing of lottery, insistent harassment and seizure of company terminals by state government revenue officers, multiple taxation, and fire incidents at the company's operational headquarters in Abuja. Uh, as we speak right now, Honorable Chairman, uh, my terminals are with open state uh, government. The, that we see. I reported to the National Lottery Regulatory Commission and they sent uh, their coordinator there and nothing uh, happened, they refused. I went there myself and uh, I was told before I can get my terminals back, I have to pay 800 million. Uh, we got our license in 2015 and uh, we didn't start operation until 2016, uh, sometime in June, July. Uh, as we're just about to get our feet on the ground, because uh, as it is, being a new company coming up, distributing your terminals is a big challenge. It's not like 
you just start uh, open your door today, people start playing. You have to distribute your targets <coughs> to agents for people to start playing. Uh, for people to even know you, you know, and trust you the, to the fact that oh, if I play and I win, there is a capacity to pay me. It's a problem. You have to beg agents to even accept your terminal, you know. So we're gradually doing that. But unfortunately, uh, in February 2017, that this year, uh, we had a fire incident in our premises that raised down our building completely with everything in it. Representatives of other lottery companies at the meeting equally spoke on some challenges they face in their various locations, which include non-execution of court judgment against Lagos State government on multiple taxation, seizure of terminals, and call for lottery to be in exclusive list. In clear words, the national lottery they could not defend the certificate they gave to us. We are left at the mercy of each state. For instance, my office in Lagos, I cannot operate. 200 million was being charged before I can operate. In Nobu State, 100 million. This is my state. What is happening in our industry is that is actually to a large extent free for anybody to walk in and operate some kind of lottery scheme and walk away when he's done. Banks, telecom companies, and many other businesses sneak in and operate lottery schemes and walk away. Whether they do it well or not, nobody cares. And all these things are bringing bad name to the industry. With the house to assist in protecting the operators because the commission has not done enough in view of the handicaps of the commission. They don't have a, a police unit as it were. So the National Assembly can help us to enact laws protect agents and operators in that way. And I also suggest that in making those laws, the contribution of operators have to be considered. The key element to making sure that lottery grows as, as an industry is paying a high RTP for our players, ensuring that they get motivated to play our games. If we cannot pay something that's high enough, we can't drive the whole economy forward, the whole lottery industry forward. So I think there is very good benefit in looking at how we can change the landscape and do something like what is being done you know, in other countries or in other regions and have maybe like government mandated fees or commissions that should be paid to the agents and to the retailers. Obviously we can't pay as low as what they're, what they're paying outside, but we can probably drive it down so that it enables us to be operational and profitable, it enables the commission to be also profitable and it drives the whole, uh, the whole force behind the lottery industry. And I still, um, the issues they've raised, we faced it. Lagos State actually, the commission, when we reported to them that we were seizing our terminals and arresting our agents, they went to court against Lagos State and they won. The, uh, the court determined that when you have a federal license, you're not supposed to be subjected to state license to get another license. They won that case. So that's what I'm trying to say. We, we face all the issues they're facing, but our case is peculiar. At the end of the meeting, the committee directed all licensed lottery operators to supply nine items to them, which include evidence of approved license, Evidence of all fees paid to National Lottery Commission between 2005 to 2017. Statutory remittance of 20%. Valid head office and business address. Evidence of payment to winners. Copies of annual report from 2013 to 2016. And audited account of the operators from 2013 to 2016.